welcome to Atlanta Live, the Seniors Today program. My name is Pat Mathis, and normally Betty Cornett is with me, but she's doing a mission work in Bulgaria right now. So I have a co-host that you all know very well, and that's Dr. Jerry Goff. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. It's always a joy to be on uh, Seniors Alive and Atlanta Live, <laughs> yes. and it's always a joy to share it with you. Thank you, and thank you for being here. Oh, it's a joy. We've got a great program tonight. Oh, we've got a great program really tonight. Really good program. And on this program, we have Pastor Leroy Doe from Concord Baptist Church. He's going to talk and share with you. You all know him very well. He has his own program here. And also we have Pastor Fred Hartley and you'll get to know him tonight and he's the pastor at Liberty Alliance Church here. He's going to tell us all the things that he's doing there at the church and share with you. And we also got a great singer, a great songwriter, and a person that has truly made a, a strong impact in Southern Gospel music and music as well. And that's Brother Ronnie Henson. Yes. And he's going to be singing Singing for us and going to be uh, sharing his story with us, That's and right. I'll be telling you more about him because I know the Henson, yes. how strong they have been in the Christian music genre in America. That's and right. then we have out of state folks that That's are with true. us tonight, not from, only from, uh, from Tennessee, Pennsylvania. but from Pennsylvania. That's right. We have Pastor Mike Sanders of the Open Door Church, and we're just delighted to have him. And of course, we're going to have with him his business administrator, personal friend, longtime associate, yes. Bill Dykes. That's that's right. And you Bill has been in gospel well. music for a long, long time. Yes. It's going to be fun, isn't it? It is. It's, it's going to have an exciting time. So let's begin our program by enjoying Brother Ronnie Henson as he sings for us, Jesus Found Me. Enjoy Brother Ronnie Henson. <laughs> Oh, 
song that I wrote a long time ago still holds true today. He can and he will. Now who can speak to a cripple and they just stand right up and walk? Who can cause a deaf and dumb to hear and start to talk? Who can call a fever crowd but just say it, let it be? Just a little bit of clay, touch him in a way their blinded eyes can see. Telling you he can, and the know that he is gonna stand by your side when your whole world comes crashing in. Ain't no one ever done what he has done. He laid down his life when he rose to live again. Aren't you glad one morning before the sun come up? The sun come up, oh, I feel it rising up in me. Yeah. Now what can cause an old man about to say goodbye? To lift up both of those dying hands with the tear running from his eyes. With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say, don't fear. Cause the one that brought me through the storm's gonna lead me home from here. I said he can. When your whole world comes crashing in Ain't no one ever done what he has done He laid down his life when he rose to He got up, that's what he did Yeah, he did I said he is gonna stand by your side When your whole world comes coming in Jerry, that's good singing. Amen, amen. <laughs> that's true Henson singing right there. Good singing there. I tell you, that's I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. Well, we <clears throat> have Pastor Leroy Doe with us. Good to have you, Leroy. Thank you. Hey, hey Pastor. Hey, love you in the Lord. Always so amen. good to see you. Good My to goodness. Be here. You know, I was listening to him sing, and I saw you smiling over there and sort of patting your foot. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> I am so glad that in our world yeah. of ministry, yes. He said, come into his presence with singing. It yes, sort of sir. opens the door yes, for you and does. me. Singing softens the heart to receive the word. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, it sort does. of follows the ground, follows doesn't it? Follows the ground. It really yeah, does. yeah. Yeah, and he can really sing. He can oh, sing. he can. They, all Ooh. that crowd can do it. You Ooh. could follow that with a good sermon. I just guarantee you, you've got one just welling up right well, now. Well, I think after that, I would probably just say the doors of the church open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would just save myself the trouble. I wouldn't try to follow behind Oh, it. wouldn't you? you yeah. Know, no, no. Oh, my. Yeah. Pastor Leroy, we yeah. know you have a, a program on here. Yes, yes. And also you have, um, it, when, when's it on? We're on every Tuesday morning at 1030. That's right. Yeah, on the station. That's a good time. Uh -huh. It is an awesome time. Yes, sir. It's an awesome time. You know, God is truly blessed. Yes. To God be the glory. That's all I can say. To God be the glory, because mm -hmm. I I don't propose to accept any credit. It's all been to God's glory and His honor, and I'm so grateful. Well, you know, and I'm gonna totally agree with you that yeah. God deserves all the credit. Yeah. You know, but then again, He has to have some workers too. That's you know, true. I remember the story that I love. The preacher that went out to this farmer's house. Yeah. I had dinner on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And after dinner, he said, uh, Preacher, come out here. Look at this field of corn. Uh -huh. He said, it's my best ear stand of corn I've had in years. It's wonderful. And the preacher said, give God all the glory. He deserves all the glory. He said, I'm going to give him some glory, but you should have seen this field when he had it by himself. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? God puts people in place yes, for just does. the season and yes, just the right does. time. And to yes, plant and harvest, and you're one of those people. Well, I, I think I, I, I'm always grateful that he allows me yes, yes. to participate in his plan of redemption. And, and, and I feel so honored because that's the only plan for the world. Yes, yes. And to just be but a part of that, just be but a part of that, yes. you know, and so... I, no, I know you've been saved. Excuse me, Pat. It's okay. I, I know you've been saved a long time, but how long have you been in the, as we know, the ministry? I've been um, pastoring 33 years. 
33 years. 33 years. Well, I've been at my something? current church 24 years. My goodness. Yeah, my God goodness. is really good. In the He's name of your church? Concord. The Concord Baptist Church of Atlanta. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Wonderful group of people. Not a big church, but you couldn't pull me away from that church. Well, what Nobody a compliment that is to them and to you. It's the most awesome group of people, the most wonderful, loving. And I thank God every time I have an opportunity to pull onto that ground. Uh -huh. You know, and I just thank him for that. They're awesome people, and God is doing a wonderful work. Do you have people that have been there with you all the years you've been there? Ever since I've been there. There's yeah. some right? who've been there, yeah. There's a and core there's, group that's been there that whole time. The well, whole now, time. A lot of that group comes here and that's shares right. with us uh, being that's prayer right. partners. When do Every they come Every fourth in? Friday night. Fourth Friday you know, night. And mm -hmm. I, I think that you know, long before I had, I was blessed with the privilege of hosting. Uh -huh. I was behind the camera uh -huh. because there's another lady besides Sister Pat by the name of Betty, Betty Cornett. Cornett. Yes. Uh -huh. Between the two of them, they introduced us to the station. Uh -huh. oh. And we started out as prayer partners some 15 years ago. That's right. Really? Didn't worry about being on camera. That wasn't important. The important thing was to help somebody. And so you began actually yes. as prayer partners in they the did. prayer room? Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, oh, What yeah. a compliment to you and to your yeah. leadership oh, and yeah. with your congregation. That's oh, yeah. great. And we've yeah. been coming 15 years now. Uh-huh. Do you find that uh, having workers from your church working in their prayer room has affected them in the church, in their outreach, in their re touching lives in the church? Dr. Gulf, let me tell you, my friend. They are some of the strongest people in our church. Oh, I can believe that. I can see that. When when people don't think it's robbery to give her their time to come and to share and to encourage and to lift up somebody. Yes. And I think if there were a ministry that needs to be emphasized a little bit more, uh -huh. it's the ministry of encouragement. Yes. The ministry of Barnabas. Well, we all need that, everybody. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. especially in times like this. Yes. Uh -huh. We need that. We need that encouraging ministry, something to let us know in spite of it all, mm -hmm. God is still in control, uh -huh. you know, and especially as we go through the times we're going through now. Yes. And I, I don't know, Lord just lift up in my spirit and I don't know why I want to say it, but I want to say it. Yeah. I, I would hope th that the Christian family uh -huh. recognizes uh -huh. that the, the answer to the problems of the world is not in Washington, D.C. No, it's not. Uh -huh. no. Right. That's right. We spend a lot of time mm, yeah. dickering over candidates. Mm -hmm. And whoever wins, we're going to call him either Mr. or Ms. President. That's, That's right. right. So we need to get over the foolishness. Yes. But God God's gave us an answer. He God's did. in control. And he told Solomon mm -hmm. 700 years before the birth of Christ, if my people who are called by my name. Right. That's, That's right. us. He put it right where it belongs. Yes. We'll humble themselves. I feel pray. a little preacher's itch coming yeah. on there. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm, 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 it's <laughs> never changed. Uh -huh. yes. And we want to put it on everybody else's shoulder, but he gave us the power to bind and to loose. Yes. And I stand firm on that power. Yes. Oh, That's yes. tremendous. That's yeah. tremendous. Yeah. It answers the core problem of our need, That's not right. just the surface problems. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's right. Now you, he is also, he hosts, is it the every Friday night or every Usually other Friday every night? every second and fourth Friday night. He I'm hosts this host. program. Yes, yeah. I watch you. And so I have a new nervousness sitting on this sofa. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted him to come and share a little yeah. bit about his church and what he was doing because he's usually sitting here and interviewing someone else and talking yeah. to them about what they're doing. Yeah. So I asked him to come tonight and share what he's doing there at his church. I'm Did you do TV before you came to the station involved as you are now? Um, only for a short time. A short time. Ironically, in New Mexico. Really? Yeah, in My New goodness. Mexico, we visited in the visitor station and I, before I knew we weren't there. Uh huh. You know, and then we were off there. Uh huh. You know, but it, because I came to Atlanta under the directions of God, I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh huh. Okay. And God told me when I came here to conduct a revival that I want you to move to Atlanta really? to go into evangelism, just like that. I went back after the revival, wrote my letter of resignation on my job. Two weeks later, I was living here. No job, no nothing. Boy, you trusted God totally and completely, didn't you? 100%. But God gave you a job, so what was that job? He gave me a job. I was a billing inspector for the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I came here on a, on a Saturday. I got hired on Monday. Two days later, mm -hmm. 
Wow, how special now, that's is that? The, that's the God in heaven true. Uh -huh. And so I asked And you God worked at that job how many years? Over 20, 20 something years. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. And you pastored while you were also employed in the Oh, yeah. In, in yeah. The oh, yeah. Inside. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that's fantastic. Why did you feel, why do you think God really brought you, not only is your voice important in the Atlanta area, but wh why do you think God brought you here? What is in your heart? To never forget God uh -huh. and to never forget who brought you over. Uh -huh. I think with, with as much as we've taken God's simple message uh -huh. and expanded it to the point sometimes where it becomes difficult to understand, uh -huh. that the truth of the gospel is very simple. Uh -huh. and, and to iterate that because the learn and the unlearn need to not have an excuse right. for not making God that choice. That the ground at the cross very is level good. for yeah. every man. Yeah, yes, for sir. every man. Very That's good. right. Yeah. That's very fantastic. Good. Do you have a... You know, I've I've heard you on the, of course you're on the TV, but and I've been to your church. That's right. But I've never really heard you as a pulpiteer or as a person behind the sacred That's desk. Right. Are you a subject preacher? Or are you an expository preacher? What do you think of yourself in the style of preaching that you are? I mean, do you I, mind I, me asking? I, I, no, I, don't I'm, I, I suspect more expository. Are you? I'm not a manuscript preacher. Uh huh. Um, and and. And I, I move by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. There are many times, and I'm sure the other ministers who are coming on after me can bear witness that they have prepared messages they thought. Yes. Only to get to church and God changed it. All of us have yeah. had that experience. Yeah, yes. yeah. And yeah. so that's why I try to stay open to his guidance and to his direction. Uh-huh. You know. I think that's fantastic. And so being sensitive to his leadership is so that's important. Right. Yes, that's sir. right. Now, I know you're married. Yes. And uh, she comes with you a lot of oh, times yeah. here. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And shares on the program. Yeah. Does she share also in the church? Does she work there in the church any? My wife uh, heads our Sunday school department. Mm -hmm. and she does an awesome job. She's a great teacher. Uh-huh. And there teaches is a difference between a preacher and a teacher. Oh, yeah. Yep, she teaches so. me every day. Uh -huh. I learned from her, yes. and hopefully she's, she's learned a thing nice too. Lady. She's nice. a nice lady. She's a nice. I married way, just like you. Oh, <laughs> I married way beyond myself. Way beyond myself. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. There's so much above us. We had to get on the ladder just to ask him out. Yeah, didn't we? Just yeah. To ask him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, you've been such a blessing to this station, along with uh, the, the, you know, the station being a blessing to you and to the community here. You have been a blessing to the station. Yes. I've heard you talk about oh, that. Oh yes, definitely. He's he, he always well, comes and he yeah. does whatever he wants. That we need uh, just to bless him. And I think this is something why I've been able to stay here as long as I have because I've never forgotten that this station has done a lot more for me than I've done for it. And 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 it and it it provided the opportunity for me to fulfill what God told me to come to Atlanta to do, uh -huh. to go into evangelism. A couple of years ago, I asked God. I said, I thought you told me to come to Atlanta to go into evangelism. Uh -huh. I'm not traveling everywhere. Uh -huh. He said, Open your eyes. Yes. You're preaching to people via the station that you never would go to their church. How true, how true. So you're evangelizing for yes. one place. And yes. I had to apologize because he oh. fulfilled his part. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. That's true. It Sometimes, is. you know, we don't realize it, but we're talking to more people watching the station yes, sir. than we would see in a building. Yes, anywhere, sir. Of any yes, size. sir. Yes. yes, sir. Well, Pastor Doe, we've got about three minutes. Is there anything that you want to share tonight? I would just pray that all of us who've been called by God will again go and revisit our calling uh -huh. and, and remember who we are and whose we are. Uh -huh. Because if there ever were a time that the platform of Christ needs to be elevated, that time is now. Uh -huh. We're yes. walking around in so much spiritual confusion, yes. and a lot of the confusion is because they see confusion in us. Yes. You know, but if we will go back to the old landmarks, Jeremiah says, "Seek ye out the old way, mm -hmm. and when you found it, when you find it, walk therein." Mm -hmm. And I'm just the old way kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I and I trust, but I I thank God that through it all, I am blessed to live in the greatest country in this world. Yes, yeah. amen. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. With and that does not mean that we don't need God's blessings more than ever. That's right. You know, I, from our days of our founding fathers to the present day, we need his leadership yes, we do. to surround us with yes, his presence we do. and yes, guidance. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And you're doing your part. Yes. And I 
can say, although Pat is the executive here at the station, I can say as one who watches, thank you for what you do for Channel 57. Thank I, I so certainly much. thank yes. God for this station and, 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 and the anointing that God has on this place. Yes. There have been a lot of places, but you don't always feel the presence, the the living presence of God, and it's in this house. Yes. And that's because of Sister Pat and Greg and all the staff. They're anointed people and the most wonderful people that. to be around. Yeah. I believe that. Thank you so yeah. much. I, believe I thank that. God for you. Thank you. Thank you Amen. so much, and you're a blessing to us. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> that's great. The, you know, it's hard to describe the anointing. Yes. I like what the fellow said. He said, what is it? He said, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know when it ain't. I know. Oh. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> it's you know, the truth. That's it's true. We can sense it and know that when it's there. It's the truth. And it's that intangible that only God can put into a building, to a, to a ministry, right. to a, a staff, to, yes. a, uh, to a church. It's that annoying. And I think about all the people working as a prayer warrior, yes. as I did. All of the people who call in have been blessed by the station. Right. These suicides have averted. People have been healed. Yes. Marriages have been reconnected. So many yes. wonderful things because yes. of this station. Absolutely. Now, before we go, tell us how to get to your church. Uh, all roads west lead to <laughs> Concord Baptist Church. So what's the address? 3270 Boulder Park Drive, just inside of 285 off Martin Luther King. Amen. Uh, That's A place great. where everybody is somebody in crisis all. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. That's great. Amen. That's great. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have a great singer now. We are, and yeah. this is Bill Dykes, and of course, he sang with you in the group for many years. Many years, and he's singing here tonight for us by himself, and he's going to sing "No Other Word for Grace." That's right. God bless you.
products. Well, Bill still got it. Absolutely, he can still absolutely. See. I he can tell you see. what. I was just uh, kind of mouthing because we couldn't talk yes, very loud to Pastor yeah. here. Uh, we sang shoulder to shoulder That's for right. many, many, many years. years. What That's a joy it is to still hear him with such big round tones filling up. The and just recently, you all had this yes. Legends reunion yes, in Mount did. Juliet, Tennessee, yeah, and yes. you all sang, the three of you, with, yes. with Tank. Yeah, with Tank. With yeah. Tank uh, singing. It was fabulous. It well, was really, you're being nice. You sang yeah. just as well. It was <laughs> well, just as good. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I've never had that kind of a voice. I have that old rough preacher's voice, like know, pouring it, gravel it, over it, a tub, you know. It blends right in with what Oh, does it? Yes, it blends good. right in. Well, let's introduce our guest. <laughs> yes, we have Pastor Fred Hartley from the Lilburn Alliance Church right here in Lilburn, Georgia, very yes. close by. Welcome. Thank you so much. Good so to have glad you. to get to know you. I've heard of your ministry, but it's so good to get to know you in person. Yes. So how did you get started? What, when were you saved? Well, I met the Lord as a teenager. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad and mom took me to church since uh, I was old enough to go. My dad was chairman of the board of deacons of my church, but he did not know Christ. Mm -hmm. My pastor did not know Christ. Mm -hmm. And I wow. didn't know Christ. No. What a statement that is, and then, Pastor. Um, yeah, I would ask my Sunday school teacher, uh, are the stories in the Bible true? And she'd say, well, they're stories. Oh. So I knew she didn't believe that they were true. Wow. And one day I came in and the back of the hymnal had the Apostles' Creed and every other line, somebody took a Sharpie and blackened out every other line. So they didn't any longer believe in the virgin birth. Oh, they didn't no. believe in this, they didn't believe in that. And um, I said, I wanna know God, can you know God? And she said, well, son, you know about God. Well, I wanted to know God. And I knew that if God made me to want to know him, he wanted me to know him. He made me that <laughs> way. Yes. So anyway, we went across town to a different church and for the first time I heard the gospel mm -hmm. of the living wow. God, uh, the one true God whose son is Jesus Christ. Yes. And three weeks later, I received Christ as my savior. And then I and I think nine members of my family were baptized a couple months later. How old oh, were you about that's that? that's great. Uh, 13. Oh, that wow. Is great. So you yeah. were on up to getting started toward life. Yeah, <laughs> 13, yeah. So yeah, and I've that's never a fantastic back. story. My dad was a cartoonist. He drew Spider Man, the Hulk, and a bunch of other uh, well known Marvel comics. Yes. But I didn't like to read, and I didn't even want to read my dad's comics. Uh -huh. But when I got saved, I started reading the Bible. And at night, my dad had to come in. He said, What are you doing? He said, I'm reading. Reading? You never read. What are you up reading? He said, I'm reading the Bible. Well, at that, he couldn't tell me to go to sleep and turn my light out because yes. I'm reading the Bible. That's right, so, exactly. Uh, but I learned to read, really, reading the Bible, and I've been a student of the Bible and in love with Jesus Christ ever since then. That wow. is great. That's yep. fantastic. True. How did you feel called into the ministry per se? You know. Well, that's an interesting thing. Um, I went to a liberal arts college. Uh-huh. But there, all I wanted to do was study the Bible. So I made I took as many Bible classes, religion classes as I could. And freshman year, I started a Bible study for my uh, students, uh, my peers, my classmates. And one thing led to another, that's all I wanted to do. And it was after I took a job in a church that God every day would say, will you speak for me? Will you speak for me? I'd go out and walk at night, will you speak for me? At Sunday, on Sunday when the preacher would preach, I'd go forward and they kept thinking, is he not saved? Doesn't he know he's saved? Why is he always going forward? But the reason was God, every time, no matter what he preached on, God was saying to me, will you speak for me? Mm -hmm. So that became my call into ministry. And then I went to graduate school to really learn. I knew that in these days where there'd be so many doctrines of heresies and the faith, the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith would be challenged that I needed to have more education. Mm -hmm. So I went to graduate school to prepare and then I've been a pastor ever since. And don't great. ask me now how many years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was that first church? Uh, my first church as a pastor was down in Miami, Florida, actually a little south in Homestead. Mm -hmm. I had I a great church, is. nine yeah. years and then well, I've the been tornado, here for 20 years. Up. Yep, that's right, after we left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's good. Yeah. Well, you, you know, it. that's a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. Well, from your background and from your education and all that, now you've written lots of books. Or do they follow one theme, or what, did, what all the books <laughs> have you written? Well, when I started writing, I was writing for young people. Uh -huh. And uh, I sold a lot of books uh, for teenagers. That was almost in a former life. 
but more recently on prayer and revival. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, I have a heart for, I, I want to see the final unreached people reached on earth. Uh -huh. And they're not going to be reached through a lukewarm church. Uh -huh. The only way the final unreached people are going to be reached is through a revived church. Mm -hmm. And so, isn't that the name pray. of one of your latest books? No, it ought to be though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me let me tell Fair you one, on one quick story. A number of years ago, God taught me the difference between the omnipresence of God, mm -hmm. which is His everywhere presence, uh -huh. and the manifest presence of God, which is His concrete, revealed presence. Now, we all believe in the omnipresence, but too many churches have settled for the omnipresence. Now, the omnipresence, as I say, is biblical. It's the fact that, that his presence is everywhere. And we know, as it says in Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If, if I go up I to the heights, to heaven, you're there. Yeah. If I go to the bottom, the I depths of the sea, you're there. The that's the omnipresence. But that's not what distinguishes the church from every other institution on earth. What distinguishes the church is the manifest presence. It's that Christ promises where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Now, he's not talking about the omnipresence because you can go to the sports bar down the street or, or the fitness center and his omnipresence is there. When he said, where two of you come together in my name, mm -hmm. there am I with you, he's talking about his manifest presence. Mm -hmm. And often God chooses in the Bible to manifest his presence in fire. Elijah said the God who answers by fire, he is God. Moses met God in the fire in the burning bush and all that. So I wrote a book, Prayer on Fire. Mm -hmm. That's what I saw. Yes. yes. And uh, I thought that's what you were fishing for. Uh -huh. So um, that's yes. with Nav Press. And it's been a, uh, it's been a How do you describe door. prayer on fire? What in that, give us an example, you know, when you know our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, sure. et cetera. Then from that, go and, sh and give me uh, part of the sermon you would preach on prayer on well, fire. I'm not going to preach a sermon, but I'll answer your question. Okay. So prayer is what we do to uh -huh. encounter God. Fire is what God does to encounter us. Uh -huh. We don't do fire, God does fire. Mm -hmm. Only God manifests himself. So what prayer on fire is, is when what we do and what God does slam together. That's prayer on fire. And God wants every one of our prayer lives to be on fire. Mm -hmm. The pastor who was just sitting here a moment ago, mm -hmm. talked about how he could sense the presence of God and the anointing of God here in your television station. Yes. That's not the omnipresence. That's the manifest presence. Mm -hmm. and that, that's the anointing like he was talking about, similar? Anointing is part of manifest presence. I mean, that's when it comes on an individual and so forth. Uh -huh. But when God reveals himself to uh -huh. people wow. is his manifest presence. And uh -huh. that's what the church needs. That's, what, that's the single factor that separates the church from every other institution on earth. Would that come through dedication, consecration, prayer, long time, fasting? How would okay. that be? All those things you just mentioned are what we do. And yes, that, con that moves us in the right direction, uh -huh. but I believe that revival is only ever a sovereign work of God. Uh -huh. That we don't produce revival, God sends revival. How can we prepare ourselves to receive well, that Well, those things are a good idea. Fasting, praying, mm -hmm. uh, seeking the Lord, being in the scriptures, mm -hmm. a holy life, all that mm -hmm. is part of it. Mm -hmm. And even that requires the intervention of God, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Boy, I love this kind of talk, but we need to learn more about his church. I know. You know, because you got a most I unique love the church. church. That's great. I love my local church, Lilburn Alliance Church, only uh, five miles from the television station yes, today. Yes, it is. And um, I've been here 28 years, and in those 28 years, we've seen a number of shifts. The first shift was more or less the demographics. Mm -hmm. When I arrived, our community was 98% white English speaking. Mm -hmm. Today, it's less than 40% white English speaking. Right. In the middle school right down the street from us, we have 90 languages spoken. Yes. So when, when we decided we were going to not move, like a lot of churches moved out of town, they we did. wanted to stay and reach our community, yes. we realized we needed a change. Mm -hmm. Well, I began visiting door to door, and I visit about 2,500 homes a year mm -hmm. all around my church property, yes. and I love it. I feel the pleasure of God mm -hmm. when I'm out on the street. Mm -hmm. Well, since then, we've seen the demographics in our church change dramatically. Mm -hmm. We now Describe have about 100 that. of our people go out. Well, we have people 
in our church who are members of my congregation who were born in 62 different nations of the world. Isn't 62 that great? nations Isn't that great? represented in your yeah. church. Thank yes. the Lord. I think that's no. fantastic. Yes. Every year, yes, every every Sunday that we gather, it's really a miracle. You ought to call yourself the United Nations Alliance <laughs> Church. <laughs> we thought of it. Yeah. We thought of it. Yeah. yeah. That's no, it, it really is. It's it is heaven on earth. Every Sunday we get to experience the reality of the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and. A lot of churches go for one demographic or even one age group. I love that this is Seniors Alive. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to dye my hair before I came, but when I saw the name of this show, I thought, no, I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Well, but Seniors Alive, we have seniors, and we have a growing, booming youth department. Mm -hmm. We have do you, uh, in how do you minister to that yes. diversity? Do you have different classes, different, do oh, yeah. you teach in different languages? How do you minister to that diversity? Well, great question. You're pitching underhand here. I love it. <laughs> so um, uh, several years ago, there was another shift that we took as a church. We uh -huh. used to be a program-based church. Uh -huh. Everything, we ran great programs. Uh -huh. We don't do programs anymore. Now we do life groups. Uh -huh. We gather people in small communities, uh -huh. 8 to 12 people who meet normally every other week because Atlanta's a busy place. Uh -huh. Some meet every week, but normally every other week in homes uh -huh. all across this area. We yes. have 42 very alive life groups. Uh -huh. And the deal is... They're often then the demographics will gather in those life groups. So some are seniors only, some are, are uh, mixed. Yes. And we have them for college age students, we have them for high school students. And they include the neighborhood too. Yes. Yes, as you well know. <laughs> as I well know. You're in one of our I life am. groups. I Hallelujah. Am. That's, That's right. awesome. When people want to come to your church, particularly maybe they have a desire to get involved. Yes. Do you have a training program? How do you involve them in the ministry of the church diversity? Well, great. Thank you for asking. Let me say our one of our main strategies is the opposite to that question, and that is how as we as a church can become more involved in our community. We used to think that the big deal happening in Lilburn was what was going on inside our building. But we equip our people so that they're on mission every day so that they focus not on what goes on in our building, but what goes on when they leave the building yes. out in their mission field, out in their neighborhood, in their high schools. We've got, uh, our youth pastor has been involved in one of the local high schools. Mm -hmm. And this past week, he and the coach of the football team shared the gospel with one of our high school football teams and 42 young adults prayed to receive Christ. Players Isn't on the team, that is a fantastic. came to Christ. That yes. That's a fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. It didn't happen Witness. in our church, but it happened because our people take seriously their mission when they leave the church. Yes. So how do you tell them right. to witness? Do you teach them to teach the Roman road? Do you teach them to pray with them? Do you teach them to quote scripture? What is the essence of your of your? Well, training? we have two tools. Okay. Um, we we have what's called four chair disciple making. Oh, okay. That's Jesus what I mean. had friends in four chairs. He had friends who were seekers, who were not yet Christians, like Zacchaeus. When he went to Zacchaeus' house, he was not a believer. He wasn't a Jew. He wasn't. He wasn't anything. He was a secularist. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are believers. That's the second chair. And Jesus said to his disciples, "Follow me, and I'll make you disciples, mm -hmm. uh, fishers of men." So the second chair are for believers. The third are for disciples, those who are in the word, praying, and so forth. The fourth chair for disciple makers. Jesus doesn't want us just to be disciples. He wants us to make disciples. So those four chairs. So we have tools under each of those four chairs. So what you're asking is how do we, what tools do we give our people mm -hmm. to share with, with yes. seekers? Okay. And there are two particular tools. One is a two-minute testimony. Just as I shared it when you asked me how did I come mm -hmm. to Christ, I gave you my two-minute testimony. Yes. Well, we teach all our people to give a two-minute testimony. Yes. And the second tool is a 10-minute gospel. Okay. And it covers everything from uh, why we were born to the love of God to the uh, fact that there is one true God one minute. whose son is Jesus Christ. <laughs> And we give them an opportunity to respond to the gospel. Uh -huh. That's great. Before we go now, give us the address of your church, too. Well, it's on Highway 29, one, east, uh, one mile east of Jimmy Carter, mm -hmm. Lilburn Alliance Church. And our website, we've got a great website. It's Lilburn for Jesus. Lilburn is our town. Jesus is our Savior. And I'm for both of them. 
There you go. <laughs> what well, a joy it is to get to talk with you and to yes. hear of your vibrant, vibrant church. And we didn't even get to cover your College of Prayer. That's okay. Uh, well, Next I love time. the church. Well, we've got 30 seconds. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, 19 years ago, I realized that I needed to develop a prayer life. I didn't want to be a pastor who yes. was uh, in the scrap heap, a rubble right. of just keeping the machinery going. So I gathered uh, 120 pastors. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the time, nine of them said I was going to drop out of the ministry. I want to keep going. We, ca we can't stop now. And today we have 1,490 eight campuses of the College of Prayer around the world. Gosh, that's wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? What an hour. Thank the Lord. So you can see how great his church is. It, Understand. It, it's wonderful. <laughs> and what Glory a great God. leader they have. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, thank and you. no Lord. church can rise above its leader, so that's a compliment to them. That's well, wonderful. Thank God you bless you. We all need to follow thank Christ. Thank you, you so much. God bless you. you. got a good thing going here, Pat. God thank bless you. you. Well, we're going to the phones right now to see what's happening there. Welcome to the prayer room. My name is Ambassador James. We're here in the prayer room with our prayer warriors waiting to pray for you and to encourage you. And, for, and our telephone number is 770-300-9828. And for those of you who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a blessing for you tonight. It is coming out of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. And it says, If thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. Hallelujah. And our prayer is, Father, I know I am a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Christ died for me, and God raised Jesus from the dead. I want to come from my sins, Jesus. Come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to obey you and follow you all the days of my life. Praise God. And again, our number is 770-300-9828. And remember, much prayer, much power. Live prayer, no power. Much prayer, live power. Hallelujah. And remember, our prayer line is waiting to pray for you and to encourage you. So pick the phone up and call us. Let us talk, because the Lord is doing miracles today. And remember, pray. And now back to the studio. All right, we're back on, Jerry. Listen, is this an exciting oh, this program great. tonight? And we've got two great guests to go. We do. We, we have, do. indeed. We do. And it's so exciting. Do you exciting. want to introduce them since you, I know, would love since to. you know the one on the end there? I know okay. both of them now. <laughs> you know, I feel like, but the Sanders, I just feel like I've been knowing you for a long time, and yet I've only met you recently. But what a joy it is to get to know of your ministry in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and the college that you're serving and the school that you have at your own church and the mm -hmm. ministry of TV, mm -hmm. just on and on and on, and we're going to hear about that. And Bill is And Bill charge. is your business administrator to yes. kind of relieve you of some of the burden of the mechanics of yes. it all, mm -hmm. and it's so good. Bill, you sang wonderfully while well, you Yes, you did. Yes. Thank you. I mean, that's I the voice it. I know well, welcome. Yeah. It's good to have you here. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Tell us uh, about Open Door Church. The Open Door Church has been around for 50 years, and our uh, pastor, uh, Dr. Dino Padrone, who led us to a ministry of about a hundred people over into a campus of 52 acres, uh, up to nearly 2,000 folks who attended regularly. And he was there for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people say, what are you doing, Mike? I say, I'm lapping in the luxury of the labor of Dr. Dino Padron. <laughs> 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 but uh, we are there at uh, 52 acres. We have a Christian school. We have a daycare ministry. And of course, uh, regular services and Bible study groups going on. And just very excited about what God is doing. That is great. Yeah. That is really good. Now, you you have the show that's on here. Yes, yes. Our program is on every uh, Saturday at uh, 6 a.m. That's right. And uh, so uh -huh. we're very excited about that and thankful. And what's the name of the show? Uh, Hope Worth Having. Hope, Hope Worth Having. having. That's and right. we love that. How did you come up with that name? Well, I'll tell you, a friend of mine actually came up with it, and uh, he was trying to get something going, but he couldn't get it going. And I asked him if I could use the name, and he said, you can have it and take it as far as you can get it. I see. <laughs> so you took what he had birthed yes. and gave yes. it. 
an outreach. Yes, and he kind and of. And now you're on TV in many markets? Yes, we are on Sky Angel, we're on Channel 57, uh -huh. we're on Channel 68 in our area, uh -huh. and so we are on seven radio t stations, and then of course live streaming every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's good. I preached a camp meeting with your former pastor there in Clarion, Pennsylvania, many years ago. Okay. Uh, it was a camp meeting there, and the Pipers were doing the singing, oh and I was one of the speakers, and your former wow. leadership there was one of the Open Door Church has a great history oh. of being a church proclaiming the gospel of yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, it does. It has made an impact in that area. Yes, it definitely How has. big is your school? Our school is 445 Ooh. students. We are very blessed and wow. thankful. <laughs> and uh, the state of Pennsylvania is very generous and kind in helping us uh, to have a good, strong school. Uh -huh. And of course, Dr. Dino Padron is the founder of our school. And we've been there for 42 years as a Christian school. Wow. Tell us how you got started. You have a good story. Yeah, I'll so, tell you. So share that with us. I, I want to share that with you because I think it relates to a lot of people. People, and that is, I grew up in an unchurched home, and uh, my mother, uh, I was born without a father in the sense that he was not a part of my life, he was absent, and uh, my mother uh, was a teenager, and she had me when she was uh, 19 years old, and I grew up in a very difficult, poor situation, uh, but uh, there was a preacher who would always go to the gas station where my mother worked, and he would get some coffee every morning on the way, and he invited my mother to church church and she said well not me but I got three little kids mm -hmm. and anyways those uh, he said I got a bus ministry and their bus captain came out invited me to church mm -hmm. and I'll tell you went to church heard the pastor preach never in my life that I heard that Jesus loves you mm -hmm. that you're a sinner and you need to give your life to Jesus Christ and receive his forgiveness mm -hmm. you did not hear that until you were a teenager going to church right absolutely and really? I was just I just never heard that message and the bus that was in the days when the bus ministry yes. were real big they were really big and you are a product of that i am a product and my bus captain he was so awesome he would always pick us up first me and my brother and sister uh -huh. and he would take us to hardy's and get us biscuits oh. and he would say don't tell the other kids yes. <laughs> so that was awesome and how were you influenced or called toward yeah. the ministry well revival service preacher came down from kansas i'm originally from stillwater oklahoma uh -huh. and he was preaching about giving your life to god and surrendering everything and uh -huh. so at the age of 16, I went forward and I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do. And when I got up, my pastor said to me, Mike, a call to ministry is uh -huh. a call to preparation. And I took off to Bible college. Oh. Is that? And you knew at that moment, from yes. that moment on, that yes. you would enter the ministry. I have person. never doubted. I finished high school at 17 years old. And before I was finished, I knew what God wanted me to do. That <laughs> is fun. Well, you that know, to fun. have that kind of focus is wonderful. Uh -huh. I mean, I that you. gives your life direction, doesn't it? It, it does, and it, sometimes it makes me a hard dad because I got uh, some kids, and I'm like, what are you going to do with your life? Yes. <laughs> well, they don't know yet, right? <laughs> right, 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 right? Well, let's talk a moment with Bill. Yes. yes. Bill, yeah, how Bill. I know that you and uh, and Dr. Sanders, you all share on the, on the board of Davis College? Yes, sir. Tell yes. us about that. Is that how you got acquainted? Yeah, actually, I met uh, Pastor Sanders when he pastored over in Connorsville, Indiana. Oh, I used okay. to sing over there. Uh-huh and uh, had the privilege of meeting him when he was over there. And for the last seven years, I believe it is, uh, Dino recruited both of us yes. uh -huh. to uh, serve on the board of trustees at uh, Davis College, which is a ministry college in Binghamton, New York. And uh -huh. we feel privileged to uh, serve there with Dino and some wonderful great men. So how long have you been there at, with the church and the college there? Uh, we've been at the college for seven years, yes. but uh, at the, the Open school? Door Church uh -huh. and Cumberland Valley Christian Schools, right. I've been there a year and two months, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. A year That's and two months. Uh, Chambersburg? Yeah, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. I always tell people west of Gettysburg. Everybody knows where Gettysburg is. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so on your way to Gettysburg, you got to stop at the Open Door Church. We're on 30 West, and 30 uh, East will take you right to Gettysburg. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So. We used to sing that Lighthouse Restaurant. 
Yes. You sure. Know about Lighthouse. Oh, yes, yeah, that's sure. Right. We sang there, yeah. you know, for, they would yeah. sponsor concerts. Right. And, of course, before that, we sang in the area. We sang all through that area with uh, uh, the brothers. The, what's the name of the brothers? Well, Jacobs Brothers. Dickers Brothers. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they sponsored great singing there okay. uh, all Kids through that Camp, area. And we'd, we'd sing it in Dillsburg, Lancaster, and then, of course, with the, those Harrisburg. there. So we'd, and, you know, isn't there a church there, a King's Brethren Church? Yes, King Street. I Brethren held church. a revival for King's. Did you? Really? Yeah, this, is this is just a reunion. <laughs> this is old home week. That was so many years ago. So many years ago. Wow, I sure did. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. wonderful story. Well, I know your background. Of course, you've been in singing for all these years with the cathedrals, with us, with the golf, and but uh, then you also kind of veered off into banking for a while. Did yes. that prepare you for what you are doing at the church? Yes. Uh, actually, being in the banking industry and. Uh, climbing that corporate ladder, if you will, uh -huh. into management to actually overseeing banks. Uh -huh. uh, and then we started our own firm uh, that we made loans only to churches around uh -huh. the country. And then I left them uh, when we crashed, uh, the market crashed, uh -huh. and uh, went to Sky Angel Television Network uh -huh. and ran the marketing division business development division for Sky Angel Television Network. You moved to Naples, Florida to be a part of the, the corporate world in that yes, world. Yes, I did. did. Yes. yes. And, then and all from these there, years you've still been singing too. Yes, ma'am. Every weekend. <laughs> well, you know, I gospel singing like the mafia. You have to die to get out of it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I just celebrated yes. my 50th year singing yes. gospel. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, years. then he's been with you now for uh, over a year. A little bit over a year. And his responsibilities relieved you. Were you doing it all before then? I was doing Doing a lot of it. I did have other staff, but I was taking care of all the HR employee issues and uh -huh. everything, just trying to organize and manage it all, and it was just getting too much. Uh -huh. And so the elders of the church wanted me to get more focused on shepherding and pastoring the people. Uh -huh. And so Bill has come alongside, and he has just been a great asset. That's good. Yeah. And Bill's not only uh, good at what he does, but he's yes. a good people person, too. He is a great people person. Yes, I mean, he, he is. is able to handle and massage situations a whole lot better than I did. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> well, well, I don't know about any better, but still, it gives you a little relief. Well, what are the what's the future for your church and for your television program yeah. and, and mm. what you're doing at the college and your yeah. school? Well, let me talk a little bit about Davis College because okay. Davis College is a place where we're training men and women to do ministry. It uh -huh. is a true ministry college. It's not a university. It's not a liberal arts training or anything like that. Uh -huh. It's about men and women who feel called to the ministry uh -huh. and they want to be fully equipped to be able to engage our culture. Yes. and to go around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what Dr. Padron always tells us is this, we train on campus, online, and multi-site uh, campuses, mm -hmm. which we have around uh, New York City and different parts of the state of New York. And hopefully the Open Door Church is gonna become a new site as well. And as far as the Open Door Church, our vision is simply this. We wanna take the gospel to the ends of the earth, make disciples for the glory of God. And that's our passion. And so through Hope Worth Having Ministry, here's our simple saying, that in Christ, there is hope worth having. Amen. Amen. And that's how you just mm -hmm. so chose the name. It seems yes. like it just fits our, yes. your mission statement as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We're living in times where people are lacking hope and they're struggling and they're looking for answers. Uh -huh. And just like the pastors you had on before who so eloquently articulated what exactly it means to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we want to take that hope to every person and let them know that in Christ, a relationship with him can bring the hope that gives us the strength, the meaning, the purpose that we need each day in our life. Right, right. Now, how can people get into this college? How do they get there? Into Davis College, well, they can go to davisny.edu, and there's an admission button that will tell them how they can say get involved. Say it slowly and say it again. davisny.edu. Okay. Okay, which stands for education. And you can go there and all the information right there on the webpage on how you can sign up, take courses, and all the courses that we offer and uh, yes. different programs. Are there That's biblical good. courses or mainly, or do you have others like 
uh, geography, uh, English, Nine and courses. Yes, courses. we have what we call Gen Eds, general education uh -huh. courses, okay. which most colleges require. Uh -huh. And but we also have concentrations that focus on particular areas like counseling. Uh -huh. So a lot of people feel oh, yeah. led to do ministry and counseling, right. um, missions work, international yes. work, or pastoring, youth pastoring, children's work, whatever that. that do you help them find a place once they've uh, finished the college there? Absolutely. We are big on internships. We are uh -huh. every student has to. Uh, have an internship before oh, they require wonderful. before they yes. graduate, and then they have to be fully engaged in a church and have so many service hours that they are wow. doing to make sure that they're. Oh, staying I love part. that! Yeah. I love that! Yeah, you know, there's no substitute for. Uh, for pre planning and preparation, right? Just Absolutely. No I'll tell you, yes. Bill, tell us more about your involvement there. You're you're part of what our program tonight. I know you're singing some. Do you sing at the church? Um, I, I haven't had much time to sing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it keeps you busy elsewhere. Uh, there, there is a lot to do. We have uh, about 125 employees that I oversee. Wow. And then we have uh, almost 450 kids in the school. Uh huh. Uh, we have a lot of property uh -huh. and we have a huge staff, uh -huh. a wonderful staff. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, so I kind of oversee anything that Pastor Mike tells me to do. That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> so what and, is this school? What explain your a, school? So we have a we have a preschool mm -hmm. uh, for infants mm -hmm. uh, to K3 and then we have a school from K3 uh, all the way to 12th grade. Oh, all the way through and, the education uh, yes, system? Yes, the entire yeah. school, yes. Uh -huh. So we try to get them in very, very young, uh -huh. and then they go all the way through and graduate. And that's kind of unusual because usually yes. they don't go all the way through 12th at a Christian school. So yes. that, that's right. really yeah. good. Do you have a college prep program too? Um, we have a Bible Institute Bible at our, Institute. our campus, and we uh -huh. are right now working with the State Department of Education to uh -huh. get Davis College to be a multi-site campus at our place, wow. where people can come on our campus in the oh, evening yeah. and take courses. That's good. Yeah. That's, That's good. really good. So we're very excited yeah, yes. about that. I understand that. I'm involved in a school like that. Okay. So I understand Great. that. Yeah. And they send us into, uh, on Thursday, we teach three hours from 7 till 10 on Friday night, 7 to 10 on Saturday from 8 to 12 <laughs> yeah. for a 10-hour college course. Right. And they get college credit for that. Yep. Well, Jerry, we have one minute. Yeah. So anything else y'all want to share in that one minute? Well, I just want to remind everybody that our relationship with Christ is the most important thing in life and that no matter what is going on in this world, that our hope, our refuge, our strength, and our courage to face tomorrow is found in Jesus Christ. And never forget every day that yes. in Christ mm -hmm. there is hope That's worth right. having. That's Amen. Right. There you go. All, Amen. All the way over to the station tonight, I drove 37 miles in the traffic of Atlanta, so you know it wasn't very fast yeah. at the traffic hour. And I preached a sermon that, that in my mind, yeah. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Awesome. And it's amazing that that was on my mind for almost two hours as I drove, and that's what Amen. we're talking about Amen. tonight. Amen. What a joy it is to Thank have you, you on. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. You so Thank, you. Thank you. So God good to meet you. you, and so good to know of your ministry. Well, God bless you, We're Bill. going to a break. Thank you. Good to see you.
Okay, welcome to Seniors Today. My name is Pat Mathis, and my co-host this evening, which Betty's not with me now, is Dr. Jerry Goff. And you all know him because he has his own program here called Enjoying Life. Enjoying Life. So, welcome, Jerry. Oh, thank you, Pat. <laughs> you know, we miss, we miss, uh, uh, your co-host that's normally with yes, you here. Yes, Betty's but usually I'm here. I'm sort of glad she's gone. I get to be here in her place. That's right. Yeah. So when she's not here, I usually ask him to come and have co-host And co I love to me. come. And yes. it's a joy to be with you. You know, I feel a part of the station. And so Pat and I have been doing programs together since Moby Dick was a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Way back when. <laughs> Way back when. And we have a special guest we tonight. We do. Our special guest on this 30 Minutes is... is uh, none other than one the. of the Hensons. Yes. And his name is Ronnie, Ronnie Henson. Henson. Good, good to have you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Ronnie, it is so good to see you. Good to see it's you. good to see you. You know, Jerry. you sang in our first hour, and yeah. oh, it sounded so good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. And I told her while you were singing, I said, you know, I've listened to that sound because I, in your voice, I heard your brother. And I heard your group, and I heard the others through the years that have been with you. Mm -hmm. And I've sung with you in coliseums and ballparks wow. and wow. across the country. And that sound is still tried. So many groups are trying to copy that sound, but there will never be another group like the Hensons. Well, you're so and kind. And what a wonderful group they were. And you're a songwriter of songwriters, absolutely. Well, and I, he's going to be singing out there a lot. Trying. You're going to be singing more for us too gonna, here. Going to give it a best shot. I'm Absolutely. telling you. I want it documented that um, that the first thing I asked you was, "Where's little Jan?" <laughs> and, uh, I want her to know I miss seeing her when so I see she's Jerry. She's watching, so she'll so, remind me of that. Yeah, so Hello, Jan, Jan. He asked about you. That's right. <laughs> well, we're just so glad to have you, and I know that uh, your brother. Uh, he pastored in uh, Houston, Texas, didn't he? He pastored in Houston, actually a little town called Humble, Texas, uh -huh. just outside of Houston. But, uh, uh -huh. but uh, yeah, he pastored there just before uh, uh, he he got sick. Yeah, with or maybe he got sick when he was there, and then he moved back to California or to uh, Tennessee. Didn't know he was sick, and we we started to do touring again after being apart five years, uh -huh. and. Uh, he got he got sick and found out that it was cancer and and um, they told him on his 40th birthday that he had 90 days to live wow. and um, so but he he lived um, two years and uh, preached and sung like a man yes. from another planet for yeah. two years. You know, I knew I knew that Kenny was a, a minister, a preacher per yeah. se, but you know, I never really knew that you were. I always knew of you as the singer, the songwriter. Did, were you preaching in those days? Uh, no, I was singing, doing what I'm doing now, yeah. and uh -huh. just kind of interjecting my, my sermonette between yeah. the songs, you know, uh -huh. and that, that sort of thing, but uh -huh. uh, uh, we'll, we'll do a meeting, you know, revival meeting or something. I'm called. Uh -huh. And uh, there's no way you escape the fact that you're called to preach. Right. But uh, we've been so effective at doing doing it the way that uh, that we do it, and uh -huh. uh, seen a lot of people touched of God. And and uh, so now my younger brother Larry is is a, a preacher. He's a pastor. In fact, he's he's my pastor. Pastors a church called South Point Church, just north of uh, <laughs> this is crazy, just north of uh, Nashville. Uh -huh. Pastors a church called South Point, uh -huh. and um, uh -huh. it's in the Assemblies of God affiliation. Uh -huh. And um, I'm on his board, and uh, uh -huh. most unfaithful member he's got because well, I'm gone you're all out the time. We're ministering; they're just lifting up in yeah. prayer. You know, a lot of people I don't know that they know this in the general public speaking, but uh, you, I remember when you, your family. You were from California. Originally from California. Yes, really? and they were, yeah, they were singing out in oh, California. Okay. And I don't know, and I've been around gospel music since, you know, back in the 50s, and I don't know of a family group or another group that made as suddenly and as quickly an impact yes. in the entire industry as the Hensons. How many was in that group? Uh, well, the four singers, and we usually tried to have a, a five or six-piece band, you know. Yes, yes. And uh, so was it the that four was brothers? A, uh, uh, three brothers and a sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, in at, at one point, my sister left. She got married, and and uh, 
uh, was expecting a child, and she went off the road, and, and uh, Chris Freeman yes. came with the Hensons. Uh, she was Chris Hawkins then, and mm-hmm. she married into the Freemans. I see. And um, so she joined us, and um, then for a good while she was with us, and then my sister came back. Okay. Yeah. How often do you hear groups that try to imitate the sound of the Hensons, but they never can do it? But I don't know of any group that is... Uh, that has been in our industry that others have tried to imitate any more than the Hensons. Well, I hear them often, and but uh-huh. it's and it, but I and consider it honor. Yeah, it's a compliment, you know. Uh-huh. And um, I hear them often, and um, it just uh, it speaks for the mark that you made, you know. And not, to yes. God be the glory, though, you know. Yes. If um, dynamite. It, it was just it was a special era of our lives, and I talked to a lot of my musicians who went on in Nashville uh-huh. to be. Um, uh, some of the best studio musicians, and they'll talk about wishing, man, we'd give anything if we could just go back to those yes. days, you know. And yes. what and were those years when you all were really so strong? Seventy-eight, seventy-nine, uh, eighty. Uh-huh. Uh, you the know, last to the seventies, tr- first part of yeah, the eighties, yeah, and so forth. Yeah, That's when you all sang too. Well, yeah, yeah you know, a lot. Lot. we we oh. sang with them yes. many, many, many places. You know, one of the places I know that where I remember so well was when Jay Basil Moe would have them and us oh, in Chattanooga yes. mm-hmm. at the yes. Macaulay Auditorium, Memorial Auditorium, mm-hmm. and then in Nashville at the Coliseum. That was when I was working there. for you. Yeah. Up there. And Jerry brought to the table an energy and an anointing yes. that uh, created an atmosphere that you better be game on. You didn't want to follow that, That's did you? Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking. Hamill thought he was tough. Uh, but I said, that's the one I don't want to follow. Right there, well, Jerry God. God was good to all of us, wasn't Yes, he, he was. He, he was tremendous. He gave many years of traveling without uh, accidents and uh, his blessings, and we saw so many lives touched. Mm-hmm. I, I'd go back and do it all again, yes. except for those times when, when I wanted to be more Ronnie mm-hmm. than, than Jesus, you know. Oh, yes. And um, mm-hmm. those are the things. Somebody said, uh, said uh, Ronnie, you must be so blessed and so pleased with um, how many people your music has touched and your and how many lives your ministry has has changed and I said um, I can't see those and I'm being humble with that and serious I can't see those thousands that we've touched maybe even millions mm-hmm. for seeing the ones that 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 we missed yes. when we just wanted to be flesh yes. you know I want our audience to know before you have to go sing again that this is the composer of the great song Lighthouse, the Lighthouse. Can you tell us how that's about two minutes? Can you give us a minute synopsis of how that song came to be? Do my best. Um, I had never seen a lighthouse before, mm-hmm. and uh, because I didn't want to go around the ocean, yes. even though I lived out in California, I avoided the ocean because of a fear of it because of. Uh, uh, my my little friend in the community, poor people, they were unsaved. Um, his son, his soldier brother, brother came home from the war, and I was in awe of him, and uh, and I wanted to be a soldier, and I just looked up to this guy. Well, he went out to the ocean and he he was drinking and and uh, he drowned, snorkeling. Oh, what a disaster! I remember them bringing him in on the slab on a slab on the back in seats yes. of a station wagon. Right. And I, something built in me that I never wanted to see an ocean, never wanted to go around an ocean. So first thing, I'd never seen a lighthouse. Mm-hmm. We were about 2 o'clock in the morning practicing for a concert because we'd been singing everybody else's songs and we hadn't written anything of our own. And, uh, of course, all the siblings were younger than me. And uh, so I, I could tell they were going to sleep and, and get sleepy. I said, let me go downstairs to the basement, to the bathroom, and write us a song. And they all laughed at me. And um, in about seven minutes, and I laughed at me, <laughs> about seven minutes on a piece of toilet tissue, um, I came back up with the words and, and uh, began to read the words to them. Of course, the ink had faded so much you couldn't, you couldn't understand it then, read it then. And uh, they threw it, threw it in the trash, and we tried a couple of hymn books to translate something into our yes. style. Mm-hmm. And finally, um, Kenny said, Dig, dig that trash out, that piece of toilet paper, unravel it, and read it off to me. And I read it off to him, and he started singing it. Wow, and that is The presence amazing. of God filled the room. And, and, That's uh, a great story. It's a phenomenal thing. It's a great story. It, it teaches me 
that God can take nothing yes. and make something out of it. And every, every time I would ever want to get puffed up and say, boy, you're a great writer, here's another award, yes. God would remind me that the biggest song I ever wrote, I, I didn't even know what it was about. Yes. But he, he has a way of, of keeping you reminded that yes. He's God and you're just you. That's right. God bless you for being here. Thank I know you. that you're going to be taking over the next part of our program here and we'll come back over in just a little bit. So if you'll just take that off right now and just walk over there and and start singing, that would be fabulous. Okay. okay. Am I on? You're, yes. <laughs> We're great. so glad you're here, yes. Ronnie. Thank God you bless so you. much. God bless you. God bless you for being here. Okay, and we'll we'll, wow. we'll we'll be listening. So to you. glad you're here. Oh, they they put a they put that on you. Okay, yeah, just that's good. Take it with you. Take yes, with you. okay. Yes, sir. God Very bless good. you. God All bless right. you. Well, isn't well, it wonderful to hear that story? It is. You know, Jerry. it uh, is. You know, I never knew how he wrote the. Uh, the song uh, Lighthouse, yes. but it has been one of the most outstanding songs for longevity yes. in Southern Gospel music. I know it has because uh, so many people out there know about that song. Yes, yes. And it's become a phenomenal thing that, and has uplifted a lot of people. Yep, sure has, sure has. All right, well, I guess that we're getting close to him uh, singing, so uh, as soon as they let us know, I guess they'll start the music. The one that only and the one and only, the writer, the singer, the, he is the grassroots of the great Henson family. All right. And here they are, to say, here he is to sing for us. The heart of God is wrapped around our little finger. He hears us every time we cry. When other loves have up and gone, his love still clings. You're still the apple of his eye. Read out all the rest of God's creation. Then let the likes of us go passing by. His heart's gonna start its celebration. Yes, it will. Cause you're still the apple of his eye. Do you know that he loves you? Unconditional love. Said, I'll take you just the way you are. But don't plan on staying that way. God walked and he talked with man here in the garden. Ah, oh, but then forbidden fruit condemned us all to die. Hey, but on another tree. The Father grew our pardon. No wonder we're so precious in His sight. Parade out all the rest of God's creation. Start its celebration. Yes, it 
Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Cause you're still the apple of his eye. One more thing. tell you that's that's the God that we serve the God that has everything but he needs us we're special to him here's a song that I wrote when I guess I was at the lowest of lows and uh, but God is the highest of highs I want you to listen to a song that says and maybe you're like this tonight but God wants to take you up where the eagles dare to soar higher than I've ever been I have heard once a bird has a broken wing, it will never fly anymore. But let me tell you what I know that's not always so. For once I So, so I fell from above like a wounded dove with no hope of ever climbing again. Ah, but with grace from up above and God's marvelous. I've ever been. Say it with me, you know. Higher than I've ever been. Higher than all of yesterday's sin. Here's where I'm at today. Up where he goes, can't soar. I can see heaven's door. I'm flying higher than I've ever been. True story. You see, I fell by the way. I was just life's wounded prey. That's when old Satan. Just like a vulture, he swept low. I remember this. It was my darkest hour. And that's when he came to devour. What was left of my old wretched, my dying soul. I was as low as life gets. But God was not me in his gym. He seemed more good than this old boy ever thought he'd see in me. Can I let my hair down and tell you where I'm at? Hey, now I live. I live above all the doubt. I'm so high. Come up and fly with me sometime. Where he goes, can't soar. I can see heaven's door. I'm flying higher than I've 
one of my favorites of uh, all the songs I did writ, and uh, I like that so well I may write it again sometime. I guess of all the songs that I've ever written, this is my signature song, and this is the song that I want to, in a sense, drive home special to somebody today, tonight. Jesus can rescue you where you are out in that ocean of sin. Listen to this song called The Lighthouse. There's a lighthouse on a hillside, and it overlooks life's sea. And when I've tossed its sin out of life it's a lie that I might see and the light that shines in the darkness night it will safely lead me on I know if it wasn't for that old lighthouse I know my ship would sail no more. Now everybody that lives around us, all around us, they say, why don't you go on and just tear that old lighthouse down? We all know the big ships, the important boat, they don't sail by this way anymore. I just can't see no use in that old thing standing round. But then my mind goes back to that stormy night. When just in time, thank God I saw the light. Don't you know it was the light from that old lighthouse? No, somewhere else, it still stands up there. Over here, thank God can I thank God, thank God for that old lighthouse? Every day, I still owe my life to Him. For Jesus is that old lighthouse. I remember, and from the rocks of sea.
Running How his great. Wow. Thank wow, you. wow, Thank wow, you. wow, wow, wow. That is great. Thank you so much. How They're many singing. thousands of times has that uh, song been recorded? Uh, if I had all the royalty checks, I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. It's just... Uh, one of the most recorded gospel songs, I think, of, uh, oh, yeah. of oh, yes. later history. Yes, Whenever right. I hear a gospel program, you know, some stations, uh, I mean, some uh, like Hallelujah Network and some of those, boy, that song's played a lot. Mm -hmm. You have really, truly been an anointed songwriter, and you sing well. You know, the years yeah. haven't dimmed your singing at all. Well, I'm it's trying. Very good. I, I, I don't know good. if I'm hitting anything over the over the field, but I'm up to bat. Mm -hmm. You know. That's... Well, I tell you what, you've knocked some all the way around the base as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Sounds great. Well, listen, look at this, Jerry. We've had a lot of calls that yes. come in tonight, and some salvations, and and it's just been great to to know that there's that many people out there listening and liking your singing wow. too. Isn't that great? Wow. This yes. is wonderful. It is. it is wonderful. That's what it's all about. It's yes. what this station's all about. This program's and it's all about. Doing what it is, too. Yes. And, and it's 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 hitting its targeted. That's right. That's and, good. And our prayer partners will pray for each one of these people, and they yes. have been praying with them too. So we're going to close with your last song, and I believe it's called Miracle Worker. Miracle business. Business. Miracle business. And I want to say thank you for having me, and Jerry. Thanks for Thank coming. you for letting me be thank here. You. With you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We love you, Ronnie Henson. Henson. Good God bless you. Thank Ronnie Henson, it's a miracle business. Amen. God he bless. is. Oh, I like this now. Some of you can clap your hands with me. What are you doing wearing that heavy burden? You don't have to hang your head so low. Don't you know this is the hour of that whole and I just stopped off tonight to let you know that God, He's still in the miracle business. Miracle business. I said, God, He can still make the devil run. No matter what you need, you don't have to beg or plead. Before you can count the one, it's done. Listen now. Now, many think that faith is just the name of a woman. Some count their faith as monetary gain. Oh, but I have got good news. Faith is what you use when you're trying to drive the devil's mind insane. I'm telling you, God, he's still in the miracle business. I said, God, he can still make the devil run. Get away, get away. No matter what you need, you don't have to beg to plead before you can count the run. You can count it down. Oh, that's where you're at. God's got a miracle, and it's got your name on it. All you got to do is say it's mine. Those doubters say when Israel made the crossing, they say the water barely reached above their feet. Many in our communities still suffer from poverty and abuse. But with the support of people like you, we're reaching out to help. Over the past few years, First Works, the outreach ministry of TV 57, has